Today we'll take a look at how TSL messages on your broadcast network can interact with your Skyhoy devices. In fact, every Skyhoy Unisketch enabled device has a TSL client and a server in it if you install the TSL device core. And that means we can send messages from a Skyhoy device, but we can also listen to them. And TSL messages are small packages on the network that will move information around like bits and bytes, usually indicating tally states and um, under monitor labels so you can use it to, to put a label in your RCP and also to light up the tally lamp in your RCP if it's connected to a switcher system that outputs TSL messages and there are so many applications and today we'll look at how it works with the Skyhoy tally box, how a Ethernet GPI link works with it and also how you can apply it on the RCP. And in fact, I also want to show you how a Skyhoy device using virtual triggers can become a protocol converter that will enable other products to be TSL clients. So for instance, in this example, we'll take an ATEM switcher. It doesn't have TSL support in it, but if you would like the ATEM switcher to issue TSL messages, either version 5 or version 3.1 messages on the network, you can use a Skyhoy device to do exactly that by virtual triggers. So let's first look at what is uh, the main use case you can imagine for this kind of support. And that is if you have a switcher system and let's take as an example, a Ross Carbonite. So a switcher like that one can send out TSL messages on the network indicating which sources on program and preview. Now we want to pick that message up and light up a Skyhoy tally lamp. So that's one use case. Now, unfortunately I don't have a carbonite switcher so we'll need to do something which mimics that and therefore i have chosen to bring a skyhoy device uh, in as the tsl message uh, client that sends out the messages on the network and it is not a quick bar it is in fact a quick pad that uh, will do this for us today but let's first look at uh, what we see here basically instead of the switcher from ross the carbonite, I, I have chosen my quick pad to be able to send messages over to the tally box down here. That would be connected to tally lamps. I didn't do that today because all we need to see this work is to observe the LEDs on the front of the tally box from Skahoy. So this is sending out on a multicast group and a specific port a message about, um, let's say camera one red tally. And this is listened to by the unit down here. And using multicast means that we can have multiple devices on the network listening for this message being broadcasted out on the network using this multicast group. So that's the basic setup we'll be looking at. And then the next thing that we'll do is to see how an ATEM switcher actually can have tally in this way, because we make the quick pad a protocol translator. Now, in all these cases, these devices, except the ATEM switch, are actually on DHCP. So using multicast means that you don't need to know the actual IP addresses of the devices, because since we are broadcasting it on the network, it's going to end up everywhere. And that's kind of useful to, to keep in mind. But of course, the ATEM switcher has its own IP address, as we can see here. And this is the first thing we'll dive into. That is to see how we actually managed to uh, let the ATEM switcher issue TSL messages on the network. So we need to look at configuration for the quick pad. So if you follow me here, I now go to the firmware updater from Skyhoy. That's the first thing you need to keep in mind. You probably already know it. USB cable to your computer having the Skyhoy firmware app. You click uh, local configuration or online configuration and you'll get access to a web page that shows you the configuration of your unit. I already have um, four tabs here with the configuration for my four units so I don't have to go through that process every time but if we look at the quick pad right here you can see how it's configured let's just briefly look at how the quick pad operates first of all it's connected to the ATEM switch and the buttons X4 5 and 6 you see right here they are set up to choose um, a source for preview on the ATEM switcher. And if you look at what happens when I, I press these buttons, you see that this is changing on the ATEM switcher. I also put in a cut button up here and it issues cut. So you can see cut is changing over here as I'm pressing this button. Now I did a few other things. If you look at uh, this button, you see button X8 is listening for a t uh, TSL message uh, 3.1, listening for address number two, matching itself up with bit number three from the message. And if that bit arrives on it, 
it will light up in yellow or amber. And then moving on to the next button here, X9, you see this button will send out a TSL5 message, multicast it out uh, to screen ID 1, uh, display number 2, and uh, it's apparently going to remove all amber tallies. So in fact, this is the reset button and you'll see in a moment uh, what it is resetting. But what we can mentally uh, notice right now is that I assigned this button to basically clear the tally light on uh, display number two, which is like camera number two on the RCP, but you'll see. And then finally, this button over here does a few things. It is sending out a version 3.1 message to a specific destination address setting tally bit number one and uh, it's a toggle button so it means that as I'm pressing it down it's it sets the bit and when I press it down again it's gonna clear the bit then I do something called an output transformation which is only the, here to paint the, the button with um, a given color and in fact I'm now listening to the same message so I'm, I'm in one sense I'm sending out a message but I'm listening to that message myself meaning that when I click this button you can see I'm actually getting feedback the toggle feedback here comes back on on my uh, my key because I'm looking if that bit that I was just setting was actually being set on the network and then finally I'm using local color and label to put a label in the display and a color in the button and so forth. So that's just quickly how the quick pad has been set up to help us right here. In and of itself this configuration is not super interesting because it's only here as a tool to uh, allow you to see the flow of messages in my infrastructure. Now the really exciting thing is actually when we turn our eyes to the bottom called the virtual trigger section right here and this is where the protocol conversion from the ATEM switcher kicks in. Now I am, just to make sure you understand, connected to an ATEM switcher with this quick pad. I, uh, you see the IP address of the ATEM right here. You also see TSL is enabled. You see I am connected to HyperDeck. So I have a HyperDeck Mini, ATEM switcher, and also TSL enabled as my device course. So if we go to the virtual trigger section, you can see that uh, I have something called source states and actions. And essentially the source state is looking for a state that will create a trigger for the action, just like if it was a button press. So let me explain. What you see is we are listening for video tally from the ATEM switcher. And if source number one is on program, then when, when that happens, when that action or that change of state happens, it will generate what corresponds to a button press. And that is fed into the action section over here, where you can see it is going to send out a TSL version 5 message. It will be multicast. You can see we could pick other destinations, but multicast is, is what we go for here. It has the screen ID number one. It has index ID number one, often called a display ID as well. It is going to have a hold modifier and the hold modifier, I'll explain that shortly. Uh, it's it's going to send a set the red bit in the message and finally it's going to send it out to, to all locations or positions. So um, if you know about the TSL 5.0 protocol, you know that it supports uh, red, green and amber tally and it supports that for the uh, right, the left and the text portion of your multi-viewer for instance. And this is what these are basically selecting. So you want to make sure the message addresses the, the that particular location that you want to place this. And then finally, you can also choose a label from the internal label storage on the Skyhoy controller. And that is a label that will be sent over for the under monitor uh, display. So that's the action. And that happens every time there is this state change on the ATEM switcher. And you see how that goes on with another, you know, virtual trigger for each thing that we want to pick up and move over to the TSL protocol. In this case, on, on the next one, it is uh, for preview. Then we look for camera number two program, camera number two preview, and send out corresponding TSL messages. So that's in fact what is happening when the ATEM switcher is changing. And now we look at the tally system over here. So I picked that up on another tab. This is the tally system. And if we look at um, the preview lamp uh, on, on camera number one, you see that we are listening for a TSL 5.0 message on this particular screen ID, display ID. We are matching the green bit. We could also match for the red bit or green only. 
if we match for the red and the green bit, it means that it can actually turn into orange if both the red and the green bit is there at the same time. Um, and then we can match any position. So regardless of our message, send it out for left, right or text portion, then it's going to match all of them. So that's the most generic one. And then finally, we can choose whether it should just um, output standard state or, um, or if it should, um, for instance, we can convert a, a green tally into a red tally if we wanted to. Now, in this case, it doesn't matter because all that matters is that we have a positive match on these two things, the green bit matching a particular position, because in fact, we are not coloring the outputs here. We would be doing that if we had it on a button instead. So um, that's the basic listening for message. And then see what happens if I go to the, uh, to the program um, output here, then instead of matching the green bit, I'm matching the red bit. Now, watch what happens as I'm now changing sources on my ATEM switcher. You see that these tally informations are also changing around. So um, it is picking up the TSL messages that happens when I press these buttons. And what you should keep in mind, and it's really not obvious here, but what happens when I change these buttons is this. I am sending a message to the ATEM switcher to change sources. For instance, you can also see when I change on the ATEM switcher, yeah, you see it changing on the panel, but it's also changing over here on my tally box because actually it is not the quick pad sending the message directly to the tally box. We are sending this over to the ATEM switcher. These two are connected by means of the virtual triggers. So this is also listening did the change state, did the state change in the ATEM switch? Yes, it did. Okay, so I'm gonna convert that into a TSL message over here. So that's what's happening right here. And what that means is that we actually have um, a, a way to do protocol translation between um, TSL and any product, as we shall see in a moment. But let's first look at how we can also have other devices on the network, because if we see what's happening here, the TSL messages coming out from our central protocol converter, the QuickPad, doesn't necessarily have to go only to the, to the uh, tally box here. It can also go to, a, um, to an RCP. And if we look at the RCP right here, then the RCP is assumed to correct a camera on, uh, or camera two, basically. And as I'm bringing camera two on preview, notice how this LED lights up. And if I'm making a cut on the ATEM switch, it is now red. And if you look at the label here, that is communicated every time, actually. Now, this is why I wanted to have that key on my QuickPad that would actually clear tally for channel two, because then you can see that I'm now sending a message to just wipe out labels and uh, the um, tally information for the LED. And uh, you can now see as I'm, I'm doing cut operations again, those messages are sent out on the network and picked up by the RCP. And if we look at how that configuration is done, let's just look at the tally uh, light on the configuration for the RCP. So we click this one and you can see it's listening to a V5 message, screen ID one, display ID two, match any color, any position, output the same color. Now, this is where color makes a difference because I'm basically saying, well, just, just display red, green, or amber, whatever the message is on the TSL protocol, um, I, while on the tally system, uh, because I have individual access to red, uh, to, to uh, preview and program tally, I need to match each of them uh, with an action. So that was two things happening, two actions, creating red and green on a particular output on the RCP. All we care about is to translate the tally message into red, green, or amber on the LED below the display. So um, that's why this configuration looks uh, as it does in this case. So that was the, um, the um, um, RCP and how that also picks up messages in a multicast environment where we're just broadcasting the address to every unit on the network. And this is along with the protocol conversion that happens inside the QuickPad, what creates a protocol translation, which means that it could be a router instead. Imagine that you, you wanted to TSL enable your video router like an AJA Kumo, and suddenly that would have TSL as well by means of putting in a SCAHO unit as a protocol translator using virtual triggers. So that's uh, some of the potential we see right here. Now, the final thing we want to look at is how this uh, little GPI box works with TSL. So it's actually doing uh, 
TSL messages two ways. And I wanted to check this opportunity to show you a little bit more about what we can do if we want to do direct messaging, because multicast is one way to get things out there, but you can also use uh, specific destinations for sending messages between uh, units. One of the things that I set this one up to do, as you'll see at the end, is to start stop recording of the hyperdeck over here. So if we look at the uh, configuration for the quick pad, apart from setting up six rules, to convert program preview tally from the ATEM switcher for camera one to three over to TSL messages. At the end, I also have a message that um, does something else, apparently. Look at it. It says, let's listen for a 3.1 message uh, going to address number two, and let's look for bit number four in that message. If there's a match for that bit, let's start recording on the Hyperdeck Mini over there and uh, do so for as long as we hold this down. Now, the hold down modifier becomes very important here because normally if you have a button and you want to start stop recording on a hyperdeck, you would uh, often make it a toggle button. So um, press once, it starts recording, press once again, it stops recording. But as, as soon as you have something like this, where a, you have a, a message, we're listening for a message, then what we want to happen is when, a, when we see bit number four on address two go high, then we want to send the down trigger of a key press, but when it goes low, we want to emulate that we are releasing the button. And this is where hold becomes very, very useful. So you'll often see hold being used as the modifier, the right modifier for messages in the case of virtual triggers. And you see that all the way through here. This is what I told you, that there needs to be a hold state. Alternatives to this is that you can set if you set, it just means when the trigger comes in, it sets the bits high. If you want, if you use remove, it removes the bit. If you uh, take more advanced actions like the one called add or set remove, uh, set remove and add remove, it means that um, if we take add, that if, if you set the red bit, then it keeps the green bit, whatever value it had. While if you just set it with the red value, as you see there, it will wipe out the green bit of the message. Um, if you know about TSL, you know what I'm talking about because red, green and amber is in fact uh, a two-bit situation and uh, if it's off then it's like zero. So it's a, it's a number between uh, zero, one, two and three binary wise. And this is why it makes sense to have operators that can both just go right for the color and some that can ma manipulate the individual bits. And all this stuff is documented so you can just watch the Skahoy documentation for TSL Device Core and get explanations for all of these different modifiers you can choose. Now let's look at the configuration of the um, Ethernet GPI link. We have it right here and uh, first of all I want to bring your attention to the um, uh, to the LEDs right over here. So just like with the tally box you can see that as I'm changing the ATEM switcher, I also see changes to, to these um, outputs. And if I do a cut, you can see there's a change to the first three LEDs. Now, this little PCB is really just my uh, test uh, board. Uh, don't get confused about that. It's, it's only here for me to see what outputs are active with the relays inside. So um, uh, it, it helps me to verify my configuration. And I also have buttons here so I can send triggers into the system. So uh, if we look at the outputs and how they are configured, uh, you wouldn't be surprised to see that the first six outputs here are configured to listen for tally messages, just like the tally system here. So you have a one-to-one -one situation that like with the tally box, you, we, are, we are basically listening for version five messages on particular uh, display IDs, one, two, and three, matching with the red bit, matching with the green bit, any position and so on, totally the same. Now, um, I actually put something in on output number eight because I thought, okay, let's, let's uh, create a situation where this box um, receives, we use a tally message basically to, uh, to flip a relay somewhere. You can use that for anything you, you want, like turning on a lamp or whatever, uh, an on-air on lamp if you want. And that's exactly what happens when I use this button called on-air on my uh, quick pad. If we go back to that configuration, you can see button number t X10 is in fact sending out matches a, a, a 3.1 message to address number one, setting bit number one. If we go to the tally box here, let's see that this is exactly what we're also listening for. Address number one, 
tally number one. Now, there's one thing that was uh, interesting here is that I choose destination number one. Instead of multicast, I'm actually going directly to this box. And you can see there are up to 20 destinations. So for whatever reason, you want to communicate directly to units and not spam the network with information. You can also do that. And uh, all you need to do is to go to the device settings where uh, TSL has an address here that is destination zero. But if you go to the device core options, you see for TSL, we have a number of options. And let's just look at what they include. They include the multicast group IP, the port number that we are broadcasting to. So we have been doing that all the time. But it also includes the option of adding destinations. You can see by this button, I can, add, uh, I can set up multiple IP addresses, which become destinations one and all the way up to 20. And then the network port that I want to, to send that out to, to the Ethernet GPI link. And that's in, in fact what we are listening to. So if we go to the Ethernet GPI link, you can see in the device core option here, I am listening on the same network port. Uh, I haven't defined any destinations and I'm also having multicast anyway. So this is even going to pick up uh, the multicast messages. So it was just for show that I wanted to, to demonstrate that if I press this button, you actually see this LED flipping. So what is that? That is essentially one Skahoy device communicating with another one to flip a relay in the Ethernet GPI link using TSL as the transport protocol between the two products. Well, we have been able to do that in other ways in the past, but now we can also use TSL as a way to communicate between Skyhoy controllers. So um, I had two triggers on this one. Let's look at them as the final thing. And uh, this is uh, trigger number one and tr number two. We can see that they are using multicast, sending out a 3.1 message on address number two. And I'm actually using two bits on the same address. So, uh, and I do that independently of each other. So, and they are toggled. So as I press, then it's flipping on and then press again off and so forth. Now, um, where are those picked up? Since they are multicasted, it could be picked up anywhere in the system. So we don't know, but I know. And if we go back to the uh, quick pad, we can see that um, down here, we are looking for address two matching with bit number four, and that generates the hyperdeck record situation. So in other words, if we look here, then bit number four is actually the value number eight, uh, because here you can send out a message with values from zero to 15. And sending out value number eight means that we are setting bit number four. You'll know that if you know binary. Um, okay, so in fact, if I press the first trigger here, what I will do is I'll broadcast a TSL message onto the network. It will be picked up with a quick pad by the virtual trigger, and it will see the state change that will result in starting the hyperdeck recording. And now I'm pressing, okay? And you see Hyperdeck is starting recording. Now I'm pressing again, it's stopping recording. So that means you can use any TSL enabled client sending out TSL messages on the network to start stop recording on a Hyperdeck if you put a Skahoy device in between as a protocol translator using virtual triggers. That's pretty neat. Now, uh, pressing the second button is uh, only done so that I can show you that I can turn on and off this button on the quick pad. So again, I'm setting the toggle action, action down here as I'm pressing repeated times. And on the quick pad, this button was enabled as we may be able to remember looking at this one. Um, matching with bit number three, that was the value four, and uh, outputting amber in case this happens. Now, with the TSL 3.1 protocol, you need to decide what is the significance of a particular bit in the message, because that's not given from uh, the, the protocol itself. That's something you define. I know there are conventions out there. Ross has chosen a convention that bit number one is preview and bit two is uh, program. So you can pick that one up. And in fact, if you download the, a firmware configuration for the tally system, uh, tally box here, we'll be using that uh, convention for the um, default configuration that is designed for uh, TSL 3.1 protocol um, um, operation for the tally box. So um, you'll be able to use that out of the box with the Rust system. So um, I think we have went through a lot of details about TSL integration. We have seen the protocol translation. We have seen how we can use it with a tally box, how we can use it with an RCP, how we can send out TSL messages by button presses, and how we can 
uh, even do wacky stuff like start stop recording on a hyperdeck using a Ethernet GPI link box. And um, if you know just a little bit about our infrastructure, our, our products in general, I'm sure that you can see how the scope of this is vast. It's really a lot of things that you can combine. So only the imagination is your limitation here. And if you know about all the device calls we do, they are now suddenly somehow TSL enabled by Skahoy hardware. Mm -hmm.